by your spirit and for you to bless our lives. Lord, I am praying that you would do so in our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray. I will clap my hands and praise the Lord. I will clap my hands and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And praise the Lord. I will clap my hands and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will clap my hands and worship my King. I will clap my hands and praise the Lord. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. O Lord, be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Amen. Glory be to God, Emmanuel. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. For his mercies endure it forever. Amen. For his mercies endure it forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory be to God in the highest, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. He's alive, amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever, he's alive, amen. Amen, he's alive. Jesus is alive forever, he's alive, amen. He's alive, amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever, he's alive, amen. He's alive, amen. He's alive. Our Savior is alive forever, he's alive, amen. All the way to Calvary he went. For me, Jesus went for you. Jesus went for us. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set us free. Glory, hallelujah. He went for me. Jesus went for me. Savior went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set me free. Glory, hallelujah. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. Jesus went for me. Savior went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set me free. Eternal life, eternal life. I want to live eternally. God save my soul. I want to live eternally. God save my soul. Eternal life, eternal life. I want to live eternally. God save my soul. I want to live eternally. God save my soul. Eternal life, eternal life. I want to live eternally. God save my soul. 
I can't to live eternally. God will save my soul. God save my soul. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know, to know my Savior died for me. My sins were washed away. Hallelujah. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know, to know. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful, wonderful to know. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to the Father. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory, glory to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, I am free. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, I am free. For the blood of the Lamb is my ransom. I am free, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, I am free. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, I am free. For oh, the blood of the Lamb is my ransom. I am free, free, free. We have come unto thee, O Lord. We will never go the same. We have come unto thee, O Lord. We will never go the same. We have come unto thee, O Lord. We will never go the same. We have come unto thee, O Lord. We will never go the same. We have come unto thee, O Lord. We will never go the same. We have come unto thee, O Lord. We will never go the same. He will fill my heart today to overflowing. As the Lord commanded me, bring your vessels out of you. He will fill your heart today to overflowing with the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost and power to all the flowing as the Lord commanded me. Bring your vessels out of you. You will fill your heart today to all the flowing with the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost and power. As the Lord commanded me, bring your vessels, not a few. He will fill you today, flowing with the Holy Ghost and power. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, afternoon, and evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, afternoon, and evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am blessed in the morning, afternoon, and evening. 
Abraham's blessings are mine. God is not dead. He's alive. God is not dead. He's alive. God is not dead. He's alive. I feel him in my heart. I feel him in my soul. I feel him in all over me. Hallelujah. God is not dead. He's alive. Yes, God is not dead. He is alive. God is not dead. He's alive. I feel him in my heart. I feel him in my soul. I feel him in all over me. When I go with the Lord Jesus into any battle, I am a winner. With the Lord Jesus into any battle. When I go with the Lord Jesus into any battle, I am a winner. Into any battle, I am a winner, winner, oh, I am a winner, winner, oh, oh, winner, oh, I am a winner, 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 I am a winner. When I go with the Lord Jesus into any battle, I am a winner. With the Lord Jesus into any battle, I am a winner. When I go with the Lord Jesus into any battle, I am a winner. Into any battle, I am a winner. Winner, oh, winner, oh, winner, oh, I am a winner. Winner, oh, winner, oh, I am a winner. Winner, oh. We know oh, I am a winner, we know oh. He's able, abundantly able to deliver and to save. He's able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in him and trust in him. Abundantly able to deliver and to save. He's able, abundantly able to deliver those who trust in Him and trust in Him. Able, abundantly able, able to deliver. And to save, our God is able, abundantly able, to deliver those who trust in him. Jesus shall reign forever, amen. Jesus shall reign forever, amen. In my life, I assure you, Jesus shall reign forever, Amen, amen. Jesus shall reign forever. Amen. Jesus shall reign forever. Amen. In our lives we assure thee, Jesus shall reign forever. Amen. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. The mighty healer, he healed the leper. When the people saw him, they started walking. Even tonight, our God will do us good, will do us good. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. The mighty healer, he healed the leper. When the people saw him, they started walking. Even tonight, my God will do his good, do you good. Anywhere he went, he was doing good. A mighty healer, he healed the leper. When the people saw him, they started moving. Even tonight, my God will do his good. 
power, power beyond the sky ah, sets me free. Beyond the sky ah, sets me free. Beyond the sky ah, sets me only cause power. Ah, sets me free, power, power beyond the sky. Ah, sets me free. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I tell the devil, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. What about you? Amen. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I tell the devil, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Dominion is mine. Dominion is mine. Dominion today is mine. I tell the devil, get thee behind me. Dominion today is mine. It is well, it is well, it is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. What about you? It is well, it is well, it is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. Hallelujah. It is well, it is well, it is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. Hallelujah. It is well, it is well, it is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. Hallelujah. It is well, it is well, it is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. I stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. I stand upon the living word. The word of God is power. I stand upon the word of God. I stand upon the living word. Oh, I stand upon the word of God. I stand upon the living word. Oh, I stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. I stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. I stand upon the living word. The word of God is power. I word of God is power. I stand upon the word of God. The word of God is power. I stand upon the word of God. I know, I know, I know that Jesus is my Savior. I know, yes, I know, I know, I know that Jesus is my Savior. And the church, Father, we thank you for this day. 
It's a day you have made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it in Jesus' name. Yours is the glory. Ours is the blessing. And today I pray you grant us understanding in your word and will experience greater, higher, deeper, broader things in the Lord in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. John chapter 8. I'm reading to you from verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look at that again. And I will know the truth, and the truth will make me free. You see, there are people when they come to church, they will read the Bible, when we even preach from the Bible. If we do not know the truth, know it in our heart. For example, you know you are a man, you know you are a woman. And when you know the truth to the point that you know that you know, just like you know who you are, and you know that truth in the same way, you experience the truth. You have the possession of the truth. And you can explain the truth related to yourself, the new creature. When you know the truth that way, you'll be free, completely free in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. That word indeed there means a hundred percent free, completely free, totally free, happily free, and permanently free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It makes us free from sin, makes us free from the consequence of sin. It makes us free from all the things that came upon us in the fall of man. The Son of God came to this world to lift us up, to take us up, and to make us free, free from every bondage of life. You are free today. I am free today. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. There is therefore now at this present time, after you have visited Calvary, after you have tasted of the goodness of God, of the grace of God, and the Lord has imparted unto you the fruit of his finished work at Calvary. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You understand that? It says there is a law of the spirit of life and it's in Christ Jesus. And it says that has made me free from the law of sin and death. Let me explain it this way. There is the law of gravity that pulls everyone down. There is the law of gravity that pulls every object down. Throw up any object and then it comes down. And it doesn't matter anywhere you are in the world that you throw up an object it must come down. Why? Because of the law of gravity. But now, there's another law that is applicable to the aeroplane. And it goes up, and it doesn't come down. If it doesn't want to come down, the jet that is thrown up, and it goes up, and it overcomes the law of gravity. There is a spiritual law there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ. There's a supernatural law. 
and it was given at Calvary. And now the law of sin and death that normally pulls everybody down. Make resolution. The law of sin and death will pull you down. And try to determine the law of sin and death will pull you down. And try to make a, you know, a commitment, I will not, I will not, I will not in your own strength. The flesh doesn't have that power. Anything you throw up, it will come down. The law of sin and death will bring it down. But now, the Spirit enters into you. The Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of resurrection, the Spirit of life in the Spirit of Christ comes into you and abides in you, and you come up like an aeroplane. And then you overcome the law of gravity. You come up, you will not go down. I go up, I will not go down. You know what you have tried to do by yourself before, and you couldn't because there's a law operating in your life, the law of sin and death. But now, because you are born again, now because you are a child of God, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death in verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Look at verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Somebody there say amen. That's the freedom we're considering. Today, we're looking at the message, the purposeful freedom of true believers in Christ. The purposeful freedom of true believers in Christ. Divided to three points. Number one, our privilege as transformed sons of God. Our privilege, your privilege, my privilege, our privilege, all of us as transformed sons of God. Number two, our purity as true saints of God. Our purity, it purges us, it cleanses us, it purifies us, it sanctifies us, it makes us holy, it sets us free. He breaks every yoke and he weakens the power of the devil and the power of sin in our lives. Our purity as true saints of God. Point number three, the purpose of the triumphant son of God. The purpose of the triumphant son of God. God. Number one, our privilege as transformed sons of God. We're coming back to First John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Behold, what does that mean? It says, don't think about any other thing. Don't focus attention on any other thing. Don't even remember the things of the past before that conversion took place. Behold, look at it. Gaze upon it. Think about it. Appropriate it for yourself. Embrace it. Behold, what manner of love. The Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. 
and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. And even today, we need to see him as he is. There are many people, they're looking at Christ as they saw him in the past at Capernaum, at Galilee. As they saw him tired and weary by the well, they do not see him after the cross, after resurrection, after ascension, after sitting on the right hand of majesty on high. You know, any time you come before the Lord and any time you pray, what you get depends on how you see the Lord. If you see him as the author and the finisher of your faith, you're going to get something. If you see him as the glorified Christ, you're going to get something. And if you see him as the provider of all your needs, spiritual, emotional, psychological, and physical, and professional, you will get what you are desiring if you see him arrive. Today I see him. I said today I see him. You know, if you don't see him on earth, you'll not see him in heaven. If you, know, if you don't see him now, you will not see him in the future. But now he says, we're sons of God, transformed sons of God, changed sons of God. Look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them give ye power to become the sons of God, to become, to become. We well, were not like that before. We well, were uh, sons of Satan, children of the devil, and the children of wrath as all others. But now we turn away from sin and we turn to the Savior. And we receive him and we believe him that now he is a savior. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. If it has not happened to you, it will happen. How does that happen? Second Corinthians, behold, now are we the sons of God? Second Corinthians chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. You've been a drunkard? Come out from among the drunkards. You've been a worldly man, a worldly woman? Come out from among them. You've been a gambler? Gambling with money? Gambling with drugs? Gambling with your soul? Gambling with your life? Come out from among them. You're being a worker in the night, doing a night work. I don't mean the regular work. I mean the work people do, and they have to wait for darkness before they can do it. Come out from among them. You've been an occultic man, a man in the gang. You want to become a child of God because you cannot get anything from the devil without paying for it eternally. Anything you get from the devil, you're going to pay for it forever and ever, and you're going to be with the devil for all eternity. 
But there's nothing you get from the devil that you cannot get multiplied fold from Christ. And it will be foolish to remain with the devil because what he gives you now is just to tie you with him for all eternity. But now you want all your blessing, all your riches, all your provision to come from Christ. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will receive you. He never rejects anyone that comes and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Somebody say amen over there. Amen. And as you become a child of God, the Spirit of God bears witness in your heart. You're now a child of God. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 14. Here he tells us in verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You give your life to Christ. And he comes to live inside you. And from that time on, he guides you. He leads you. And he will never lead you into darkness. Is the light of the world. He will never lead you into righteousness. He is our righteousness. He will never lead you into sin. He's a savior from sin. Any way he guides you, for any reason he has to guide you, he guides you into the light. He guides you into more of his grace. He guides you into a life of righteousness and victory. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Spirit of bondage is cancelled in your life. The spirit of fear is cancelled from your life. The spirit of timidity. You want to do something, you cannot rise up and do it. Spirit of discouragement cancelled in your life in Jesus' name. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Somebody say amen. amen. Some people don't understand why God can permit any persecution in our lives, any suffering in our lives, any kind of affliction in our lives, if it is for Christ, it will bring great glory into your life. I said, it will bring glory into your life that if we suffer with him, we shall be glorified also with him. We're sons of God. I said, we are sons of God. Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, we're reading from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. The privilege of transformed sons of God. The position of transformed 
sons of God, the picture of transformed sons of God. What do they look like, sons of God? How do they act, sons of God? How do they behave, sons of God? How do they comport and carry themselves, sons of God? Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Those are sons of God. That ye may be blameless and harmless sons of God. That ye may be blameless and harmless sons of God without rebuke. Can you think of a person that lives a life that even if you're looking for something to rebuke, there's nothing to rebuke. They do what they do honestly. They do it righteously. They do it faithfully. They do it graciously. And they do it in a godly manner. And if you were looking for something to rebuke, is such a son of God, is such a daughter of God, is such a child of God, there is nothing to rebuke. Your life will be rebukable. My life will be rebukable. My ministry will be rebukable. I can't hear you now. Look at verse 15 again. That she may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. I will rejoice over you when we get to the other side. God will rejoice over you when you get to the other side. Christ will rejoice over you when you get to the other side. Transformed, harmless, blameless, unrebukable, sons of God. We're looking at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ will live in you. Can you, find, can you think about somebody is going along the street and he's smoking, bringing out smoke, a walking chimney, trying hell before he gets there. And then you run after him, you say, I want to talk to you about Christ. Oh, he says, don't worry. I already know Christ. True? Yes. Everything I do is not me, but Christ liveth in me. You say, how about this one in your mouth? It says, it's not me. It says, it's Christ that lives in me that is doing that. Do you accept that? I said, do you accept that? You find somebody, two of them, they're fighting. And they're using abusive language and they're violent. And then you approach them and say, let there be peace now. Why are you fighting? What's the problem? And you try to separate them. And then you, you after separating them, you want to preach Christ to them. And then you say, I want to talk to you about Christ before I go. Oh, he says, you know, one of them said, but I know Christ already. Everything I do, Christ liveth in me. Does Christ fight? What are you? I said, does Christ fight? No. When Christ lives in us, it's a prince of peace. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me 
and gave himself for me. I pray that all these privileges of being the sons of God, the Lord, will affirm in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Point number two, the purity as true saints of God. Our purity as true saints of God. We're coming back to First John. We're reading from chapter 3, First John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 3. And every man that has this hope, what kind of hope? Already in verse 2 it said, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, risen, ascended to heaven, glorified, and our body totally transformed that we wear a glorified body, heavenly body. That's the hope. Everyone that has that hope of getting to heaven and being with Christ and seeing those angels and walking on the streets of gold, everyone that has this hope of getting to heaven, purify himself even as he is pure. He has said in verse 2, he has said, we shall see him as he is. You see, you have believed in Christ over here now on earth, and you have not seen him. And he says, the people that have the hope that they don't just want to come to church and be a religious man, a religious woman, they're coming because they want to see him on the final day. He says, all those people, every man that has this hope in him, purifies himself even as he is pure. Our purity as true saints of God. Look at verse 5. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. It's telling us that for us to be purified and for us to remain pure, that we have to get to Christ. He has been manifested and is to take away our sin. Look at verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. That's a purity. We abide in him. We don't abide in the flesh. We don't abide in sin. We don't abide in corruption. We don't abide in disobedience. We don't abide in rebellion. We don't abide in evil. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Look at verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Look at verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. That's me. I say that's me. It's not just word of mouth. That is me. You know, you've come to Christ. And he has the power. Christ Jesus has the power. The power to cleanse you from sin. And the power to turn your life around and make you who you ought to be. Pure and holy and sanctified. And because of that power, it makes you not to live a life free from sinning. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Again, that's me. I'm born of God. I said I'm born of God, and therefore I sin not. You will not sin. But stand in this, the children of God 
are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not is brother. I love my brothers. I love my sisters. And I will not do anything that will injure them. Say that. Anything that will injure my brothers and sisters spiritually. Anything that will injure my brothers and sisters emotionally. Anything that will injure my brothers, my, that will injure my brothers and sisters physically. Anything that will injure my brothers and sisters in their family. I will not do anything like that. You will not. I said you will not. That grace to remain righteous, it will give to everyone. The love to remain righteous and pure, it will give to everyone. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I was looking at verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We're reading from verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, this is how you keep yourself pure, do it for yourself. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What does that say? When somebody does not even make an effort to be holy and remain holy, he does not have the fear of God. When somebody deliberately plunges himself to anything that is unholy, unrighteous, ungodly. He does not have the fear of God. He doesn't have the love of God. He doesn't have the grace of God. He doesn't have the fear of God. And such people are not on their way to heaven. If we're on our way to heaven, you follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, we're reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 6, we're reading from verse 6. In verse 6, knowing the we know this by experience knowing this we know this by personal possession knowing this we know this by the present victory that we have knowing this that our old man is crucified with him the old man the old nature the old creature the old habit is crucified with him. Let me explain. You know, when you hear of a lion, you're afraid of the lion. You run away and keep at the greatest distance from the lion. Why? Because the lion has the nature of devouring and destroying and slaying and killing and tearing in pieces. But when the lions are there and the power of God comes in the midst of the lions, the nature to devour, the nature to destroy, all that vanishes away. That's why when Daniel, who carried the power of God, supernatural power of God, when he entered or when he was thrown into the lion's den, and God sent an angel 
to come to that lion's den with Daniel. Those lions temporarily at that time lost their nature. They couldn't devour because Daniel and the angel were there. The same thing you know, when Christ enters into our lives. And Christ is greater than Daniel. And Christ is greater than any angel. When Christ enters into our lives, the nature of violence is subdued. I cannot hear your amen. You know, somebody at home, the man is always angry. Even when the wife has not done anything. And the man wakes up in the morning to subdue the woman. Before the woman even has any chance to do anything right or wrong. He gets angry. And uh, at an, any little movement, it's a wife beater. And he continues to be beat the wife. But now, when Christ enters... That old nature will vanish away. You used to beat your wife, you beat them no more. I cannot hear your amen. amen. It will be unfortunate to read in the newspapers, like all these things we read in newspapers, when, they wanted, when he wanted to build, maybe beat me to death, that's when I ran away. Your husband will be converted. And sometimes say the wife that gets angry and whatever instrument he has in hand and whatever he can do to intimidate the husband. You are the head of the home. Okay, be the head. And he wants to wreck and ruin that man, subdue that man so that the man will not have a voice and so she is violent like the lion. When Christ comes in, the violence of the lion is taken away. Amen. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin, Look at verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Sin will not reign in your body. Sin will not reign in your action. Sin will not reign in your tongue. Sin will not reign in your activities. And sin will not reign in your house fellowship. Argument, argument, argument in the house fellowship, it will come to an end in Jesus' name. Sin will not reign in the local church in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it and the loss thereof. Verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of, tell me, instruments of, tell me, tell me, Instruments of righteousness unto God. I'll be an instrument of righteousness. You will be an instrument of righteousness. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself 
from this. Everyone in a deep and live Bible church location should understand I need to purge myself. I need to purify myself. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. You'll be a vessel unto honor. I'm a vessel unto honor. Sanctified and meet for the man.